All right, people, welcome back. More Fake Car Friday. So we got yet another card from Xeno Prodigy. You know, you love him. He makes some broken ass shit, but we're gonna go ahead and look at yet another fake card. And not only is yet another fake card, but it's another support card for you, Bell. I, I mean, I don't mind you doing these, you know, these fake cards for you, Bell. If anybody is gonna review a card for you, Bell, it would be me, right? Or Kakashi Kyle, if he's back, if he's not. I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. The point is, is that when it comes to you, Bell, I'm your man, right? I, I'm, your, I'm your man, I'm your man, I'm your man. <laughs> so, uh, once again, another fake card sent to me by Xeno Prodigy. We're going to look at this card. We're going to determine whether it's good, great, broken, and whether if it was real, would I play it, and how many, and all of that. So, this is Ubel? Ubel? Like, I guess, I mean, the name is like, what? You bell without the Y, and then you change the E to an O? Like, okay, Ubel. Ubel. The Infernal Terror. Okay, well, Terror is already in, you know, Terra Incarnate. Uh, it's Dark Rank 11, so Terra Incarnate, I'm guessing, you know. It, uh, Fiend, Xeia, Effect Monster, Zero Attack, Zero Defense. Made with two level 11 Dark Monsters. Please don't tell me that I had to exceed two Terra Incarnates, because that wouldn't be terrible. It's doable, but yeah, you already know how it is. It's like, oh, you know, with Terror, you have two Terrors, and then if you don't do anything with them, Terror will destroy. You want the other terror. Terror has to be on the field to resolve its effects. So you get ultimate nightmare, but that another terror that just died wouldn't destroy the other terror. And some ultimate nightmare. So you would get two ultimate nightmares, then that terror would end up destroying that ultimate nightmare, and then you'd just be left with one terror incarnate. So, mm, but uh, uh, two level eleven dark monsters. Are the is there a level eleven dark lord? There might be. There might be. Hmm. I don't feel like looking it up, but now off the top of my mind, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know what? While I'm here, while I'm here, I can kill two with one stone. I can review this and look and see if there's other level 11 darks besides just Terra Incarnate. But uh, you can also see some in this card by sending a level 6 or higher dark monster from your hand to the graveyard. So, uh, I'm not done reading it. Then using one non-XC monster you control as XC material. So you just have a monster on the field, you pitch a level 6 or a higher dark monster from your hand to grab it, and bam, you could uh, exceed some of this monster right on top. That's pretty simple, especially in uh, you build specifically uh, supervised because Doom Shaman is a level 6. I like how you specifically put level 6 with that to make sure that it was doable with Doom Shaman because it just seems like when Xeno Prodigy makes cards for uh, you bell that always has something to do with Doom Shaman, so so that works, that works. So, uh, let's see, there's Gate Guardian, Gate Guardian's level 11, Sophia is the goddess of her birth, uh, Dark Lord Lucifer is level 11. I thought there was, I thought there was, but he can't be special summoned, so you know, you gotta tribute summon twice, eh. Uh, Flower Cardigan Willow the Cardiographer, okay, then Flower Cardian, so uh. But I believe all the Cardian monsters, when they're summoned, don't they, like, drop their bubbles or something like that? I believe so. I don't know. I never played the deck. I never got put on Daily Duels. I never played it. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. If you can take two Cardians and make this, that might be interesting. You know, and then, of course, Terra Incarnate. That's it. That's it. So, uh, but you can say you just do it the, the, the way that it is on the card. You just have a level 6 or higher Dark Monster in the field. Pitch, I mean, level 6 or higher Dark Monster in your hand. Pitch it to the graveyard, including Doom Shaman, because you kind of want Doom Shaman in the graveyard to revive it and do all them plays. You know, and then have a non XC monster you control, whether it be any form of you bell, Armageddon, Night Dark Draft, or whatever. All right. Uh, this card cannot be shot at battle. Okay, cool. I mean, it has zero attack and zero defense, so it's nice that it can't be shot at battle. It's unaffected by other card effects you control. Oh. <laughs> well, I say uh, it's unaffected by other card effects, period. No, you control. So uh, I guess it would be unaffected by a terror wipe, so that's nice, you know. It's unaffected by your Dark Hold, it's unaffected by your Toronto Tribute, you know. But in the same boat, it's unaffected by, you know, any equipped cards that you want to play or anything along those lines, you know. Uh, okay, that's, yeah, you know, it'd be nice if it was unaffected by other card effects, period, but no, just you control. The attack and defense of all face up monsters on the field becomes zero. Okay, so you have this on the field, and everybody else is zero, and this is zero, but zero defense monsters can't kill each other by battle. It's actually in the rule book. So, I'm at zero, and I can destroy a battle, but you're at zero. If I attack on you, you're still not destroyed because zero monsters can't destroy zero monsters by battle because there's is no attack. There's no, you know. So, eh. Yeah, I guess. You know. It's like, like I, I mean, the thing is that it doesn't say that I take no battle damage when battles and my opponent takes the damage. It doesn't say that on this card. But I guess, you know, 
when this card uh, drops everything else to zero, and I guess it's fine. But... Mm. Uh, next effect. Once per turn, you can target one other face-up monster on the field, attach it to this card as a face-up XC material. That, that, I mean, that, that's good. That's good. And that doesn't even say on your side of the field. So it's kind of like Cyber Dragon Infinity. It's like, oh, you have that card? and Give me that, you know? And it doesn't even have to be in attack position. It's just, you have a face-up card, uh, face-up monster on the field, give me that. Bam. I mean, you're in a material now. That, that's pretty cool. That, that, that's pretty cool. I gotta give that to you. Uh, it's this card that has you bell, you bell, Terra Incarnate, or you bell, you also remember, as a material, it gains this effect. So... You want to pitch a level 6 or higher, and then slap it on top of a Sea monster which would hopefully be one of the forms of Ubel. Okay, I mean, it'd be cool if I could have a powerful effect like this if I slapped it on top of Armageddon Knight or Dark Earth or something like that, but even without this bonus effect, the effect is, this, the card so far is not terrible, you know? It just, with everything being that zero and stuff like that, it's just kind of meh, you know? Especially Ultimate Nightmare, Ultimate Nightmare does the damage before the monster to be able to Ultimate Nightmare wouldn't be doing any damage and, you know... What you Synchro Summon into wouldn't have any attack while it's on the field. It's just a, eh. But if it has Yubel, Terran Connor, or Ultimate Nightmares, or Ximito, it gains its effect. Neither player can banish the cards on the field or in the graveyard. Okay, one of the we big weaknesses of Yubel decks is getting banished. Whether that be, you know, you picking shit out of my graveyard and I get banished, because I've lost a handful of times during Furn Rights, uh, catching that bottomless trap also. I believe you could still... I said, let me see. Let me read Bottomless Trap Hole, actually. Let me read Bottomless Trap Hole. Since, can you play Bottomless Trap Hole if shit can't be banished? I'm not sure. Bottomless Trap Hole reads, if I want to special summon a monster 1,500 times, huh? show that monster. And if you do, banish it instead of sending it to a graveyard. I don't think so. I don't think you can... I don't know. That's a, that's a, that's a good question. If the Predator Iron Wall is, is face on the field, can I play bottomless? I don't think so. I don't think so, because I think it has to. Re the whole card has to resolve. So, I don't think I can be hit with bottomless anymore. So, or Dimensional Prison, but who the fuck plays Dimensional Prison, you know? We got all them great mirror forces, who the fuck plays Dimensional Prison? But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so, that's, that's what, that's, that's, I'm fine with that. Neither player, uh, can banish cards in the field in the Great Red, so it's kind of like in Predator Iron Wall. I mean, that could hurt some decks, so I really could, you know? Uh, during either player's battle phase, okay, your opponent cannot activate card effects. It's cool, so you can't get him mirror for us, you can't, don't have to worry about any of them, uh, pesky flip effect monsters, any of them floating effect monsters, your opponent cannot activate card effects, so it's kind of like an amazing, it's pretty good, pretty good. Kind of, now, kind of worth having, uh, Yubel as a Ximeter at this point. Uh, next effect. At the start of the damage step, this card battles an opponent's monster with zero attack, or defense, which will probably happen because this card drops all monsters on the field, face up on the field's uh, attack and defense down to zero. If you touch your Xenia Turtle from this card, all right, destroy that monster, then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's level slash rank times 300. You know what? This, is, this card's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. It, it's good, but it's not great, but it's not invincible, and it's not broken. It's just. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. You know, uh, it's unaffected by your 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 card effects. You know, if it's unaffected by just card effects. Period. Then maybe we you know we could we could we could talk. Then I'd be like, whoo! But you know, the fact that it's just unaffected. By, like your opponent can simply just make a castell and it's a it's tough to be zero, but the effects aren't negated. You attach to spin this back to the extra deck. They'll go back. Castle will go back up to two thousand because this card's not on the field to drop anymore. And you know that's it. You know, there it goes. But, um, you know, if you can have some way to protect this card and back it up with some uh, some potential background, solid opponent, I mean, you're doing the Infinity play, snatching up your opponent's monster, the attack to material, face-up monster, and, you know, hopefully your opponent. You can do it to your own monsters, but you want to do it to your opponent's monsters. And then you can attack, you know, your bell is Xenia material, attack, you know, they can't activate any card effects, they attack the material, then they, you know, their monster's destroyed despite being zero, and then they take uh, the damage and the level starts ring. Runs the repeat a couple of turns, and you might have game. So, it's a pretty good card. It's a pretty good card, you know. Uh, definitely would add something new to the table for Yubel players, you know. Uh, even when it doesn't have uh, Yubel the material, which at times it might. Like, it really depends, you know. There might be times where I've just, like, summoned Armageddon Knight, send Tinker. Oh, man, I drew Doom Shaman. I'm not supposed to get it out of my hand. I don't, you know, I don't have Dark Graffer. Oh, right. I can just pitch the Doom Shaman and slap this on top. All right, there you go, you know. So... Uh, there won't be times where I always have Ubel as XC material, but when it does, I mean, it gets a bonus. I mean, the card's not even terrible without Ubel XC material, because, I mean, can't be sure battle, it's unaffected by my card effects, so it's unaffected by my terror wipe, and then it makes all monsters on the field, uh, 
attack and defense becomes zero. Face upon the field, attack becomes zero. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not terribly great, and it's still a neg on summon, but, I mean, it's an exceed summon, and you generally neg on the exceed summon anyway, so. Uh, overall, not a broken card, you know? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Generally, you make some broke-ass shit, but this one's not terribly broken. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Card art's fine as well. So there you go, people. There is your episode of Fake Card Friday. So, of course, we'll be back next Friday with another Fake Card to look at. It won't be a Xeno. You know, I, I, I try to do, like, if anything, Xeno keeps on sending me Fake Cards every other week at, at maximum, you know. So it won't be another Xeno card. Whether it be someone else sends me a Fake Card or I have to find one myself. It won't be a Xeno card, I promise. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, Fake Card Friday. Tell me what you guys think about Xeno's card in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all support. And I will see you guys next Friday with another Fake Card to look at.